Hey guys, how's it going? So in this tutorial, I'll be showing you guys how to install Quantum Espresso on Mac OS X. So here I'm on the official website of Quantum Espresso. So we'll just go to the download page by clicking here. And then in the download page, we'll look for these two links, either the GitHub link or the GitLab link. So what this will let us do is it will let us download the source packages for Quantum Espresso. So here we have the latest version of Quantum Espresso 6.4.1. So we'll just scroll down and download this particular release package. So just go ahead and click on it to download it and then wait for it the download to complete. In my case, I already have it downloaded over um, where so I already have it somewhere here yeah yeah so this is the package that I have already downloaded so or maybe we can even wait for it to download at as it is almost complete but in any case um, here it is being downloaded right now I'll just probably I'll just go ahead and cancel this and I mean it was pretty much already downloaded but Never mind, just go ahead and delete it. So, where was it? Um, Q E. Yeah, so here is the downloaded version. So, just go ahead and you know, right click on it and extract the contents by opening it with the archive utility. And this will basically create this folder or directory over here with Quantum Espresso in it. But once again, I already have that as well extracted in my home directory inside QE and then inside QE 6.4.1. So here is that particular directory that we would have got when we extracted from the archive file. So here's that directory. So what we are going to do is we are going to launch the terminal by either going to the launch pad and typing in terminal or you can even press command and space to open spotlight and then type terminal there and open it from there so in your terminal go to the directory um, where you extracted quantum espresso so here is the release package that we downloaded and here is the extracted version right and it's all in this particular QE directory on my computer. So here I have the archive package, here I have the directory. So I'll just, I'm sorry, yeah. So I'm in the directory, but then I'll go into the directory of Quantum Espresso, which we got after extracting it. So we'll go there and then we will try to, you know, configure it by giving the command dot slash configure now in my case what you'll notice is it will work perfectly and it will detect a parallel environment however in your case it might be the case that it might not even work and if even if it works then it might not be able to detect the parallel environment so it will say something like parallel environment not detected are you sure it's a parallel machine or something like that so in both the cases if it doesn't work at all then essentially i mean it means that you don't have any fortran compiler on your pc so in my case i i'm using g fortran and if i give the command which g fortran as you can see over here then you'll notice it gives the path of g fortran on my pc however in your case if you don't have a g fortran or any other fortran compiler then um, if you search for which for G Fortran then it won't give you anything because you don't have G Fortran so my solution to installing Quant um, Fortran G Fortran on Mac OS X is to use homebrew which is a package manager for Mac OS X so in order to install homebrew you will need to give this command I'll make sure to add this command to description down below or you can even visit, visit this particular website to get this command and then um, what you're going to do is you are going to give this particular command to install homebrew however in case you already have homebrew installed then you can also check uh, for that by giving the command brew version 
So this will let you know which current version of Homebrew you have. So in my case, it is the latest version and you can even also try to update it. So you will just give the command brew update. So any case, um, so if I go ahead and copy this particular command over here to install Homebrew, in my case, I already have it installed. So I want to install it again. So I'll just press escape. However, you can press enter to continue installing it. Also, um, you must be wondering like, why am I making a video by having everything installed? Because um, usually I install stuff in advance to test if this particular strategy works or not. But um, in some cases such as this one, since I'm very new to Mac OS X and as you guys already know, all these Linux libraries are Fortran libraries or codes, they are a pain in the neck to, you know, work with. So even small changes, like if I go ahead and uninstall Homebrew or even, you know, the G Fortran or anything. So I, I mean, in my experience with Linux, I'm not sure about Mac OS X, but in my experience with Linux, it just sucks. If you even try to install even a small thing, just messes everything up with the system. So I'm trying to avoid it avoid that but I also want to share this uh, you know information with you so in any case you can install homebrew by giving this command in your terminal that is here and also um, it would be probably a good idea to give this command when you are in your home directory although I'm not really sure if it matters or not but yeah so you will give this command to install homebrew and once you have installed homebrew you can use it to install two very important components for quantum espresso the first one is g4ran so you just give the command brew install gcc so you will get um g4ran along with it however i already have it installed so i will install it again and the next thing you are going to need is open mpi for parallel execution so you'll give the command brew install open mpi after pre-install GCC. In my case, you can already see it says that it is already installed and up to date. So coming back, so once you have all these things installed, you have Homebrew installed and then using Homebrew, you have OpenMPI and GFolder installed. You can come back to the directory where you install Quantum Espresso in, or rather you, you know, extracted Quantum Espresso too. So in my case, I'm already in that directory. Yeah, so this is these are all the contents of quantum espresso you can even have a look over here yeah so these are the contents and if you you know uh, haven't run the configure or make command yet then your bin folder will easily be empty just like me so here as you can see the bin folder is completely empty so we don't have any binary install yet so we'll just go ahead and try dot slash configure once again and this time, in your case, it should probably, you know, work if you have G4Tran installed and if you have OpenMPI working as well, then you should also get this parallel environment detected. And also, uh, you know, once you install G4Tran and OpenMPI, you should also check if the installation worked by giving these commands which G4Tran and which MPI run, I believe. Yeah, so in my case, both the commands return the directories where these are installed too. Now, coming back, so we can now compile the you know uh, various quantum espresso packages such as the plain wave pw by giving the command make pw or you can use make pp or all you know any of these packages and instead if you have a lot of time at your hand then you can also give the command make all to compile all the packages at once in my case we'll just give make pw and it will also take quite a lot of time so i'll probably pause the video at this point and then resume it a little bit later okay so finally the pw package is compiled and as you can notice um, it took around five or four minutes to do so so now if you go to the directory where you extracted you know the contents of this particular quantum espresso zip file and as you remember in this directory we ran the command dot slash configure and then the make pw so if you go to the bin folder of this directory now you will notice there are a number of dot x binaries or executables that um, you can use for calculation with quantum espresso although these are not all the packages since we only ran make pw but similarly you can run like make pp make um, a lot of stuff so now since we have the most important part that is pw.x so we can also test out a sample you know calculation using um, you know 
I mean, uh, the sample calculation would be just a single point energy calculation for the benzene molecule. So I have, you know, the input file for benzene molecule um, somewhere here. So here it is. So, okay, in this particular directory, benzene, I have the sample input file for a single point energy calculation. So we are running an SCF calculation. And then we have a unit cell, um, you know, large enough to avoid any periodicity effects as I've already mentioned in another video and um, then we have all the necessary stuff such as the coordinates, the zero potentials and of course the k point is gamma because it is a pretty large unit cell you can even say a supercell and as far as the zero potentials are concerned they are in this particular directory that is in my home directory they are in BURA and CDAPOT and if you have watched my previous tutorials on BURA then you already know that BURA comes with a lot of zero potentials so I'm using all those with me even on Mac OS and coming back so now we are going to run the quantum espresso pw.x package in parallel so we'll use the command mpi run or I should also you know, clear the terminal up a little bit and then we will use the command mpi run and then we will specify the number of processes by giving the you know directive hyphen mp4 or whatever you have on your system my in my case my laptop is a four uh, i mean a quad core machine so mpi run hyphen mp4 and then you will specify the path of quantum espresso so uh, you can get the path of quantum espresso by you know going to the particular directory where you installed it and then giving the command um, pwd so we'll go to bin because pw.x is located here and then we'll give the command pwd and we will get this particular directory address and then we will just go ahead and copy it and um, we'll come back to the benzene directory where we have the input file and then give the command mpi run hyphen np4 for quad core uh, calculation and then the um, address of the quantum espresso input file and we'll also need to add pw.x after the bin so we'll add a forward slash pw.x and then space and then we will give the name of the input file that is cf dot n within these triangular braces and then the name of the output file whatever you want to call it scf dot out and then hit enter now you should also open this particular scf.out file and notice if it is actually running or not or if there are any errors so in my case you can see that it is uh, you know running on four processors as mentioned over here parallel version mpr running on four processors and then um, you will also notice that it will specify that the estimated maximum dynamical ramp or process is 487 megabytes or 486 megabytes and then since it is a four core run so it will you know get multiplied by four around somewhere that number and then that is why you have the total dynamical ram or something like that so the more is the number of cores you are using the more is the ram you are using as well so as you can see the calculation is running pretty fast and it's all already finished oh yeah so it only took about like 41 seconds or something so here you have run a gamma point calculation for the benzene molecule and you can also notice it's homolumo gap by looking here so it's something like minus 5.2 i mean 5.2 electron volt or something and i think that is pretty much correct um so yeah so now as you can see that this um you know way to run quantum espresso is also working and you can also try to run this particular um, you know calculation using a serial calculation without specifying mpi run and let's see what happens then now as you can see over here it will say that the parallel version is running on only one processors and it says parallel version because we compiled the quantum espresso um, for parallel execution so that is why it says that so yeah, so of course but, uh, the serial calculation is going to take a little bit more time than the parallel calculation. So, okay, so I think I covered everything around um, installing Quantum Espresso on Mac OS X.
so I think this should be it so yeah thanks for watching I hope you guys enjoy this tutorial and learn something new from it and in case you did then don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this thanks for watching and have a great day